Hello and welcome back to Kamila's Church YouTube channel. Can I wish you all a very happy new year and I do hope that you've had a good Christmas and New Year period, well as good as could be expected given the circumstances. But I do hope that you're well and if you, you should require uh, our support in any way, practical, uh, spiritual support, just some uh, time, a listening year, whatever it is, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Now in a short moment, Moira Merriweather will share a reading with us from uh, Luke chapter 11 and then I'll offer a reflection based on that. Moira McCarroll will then uh, finish our, our time together on the video uh, this week uh, with a word uh, of prayer. And uh, also please check out the description below where you'll find uh, Elaine's praise choices. Now Moira, uh, can you please uh, share with us now then the word of God. Our reading is from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. The parable of the persistent widow. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The great evangelist D.L. Moody uh, tells of uh, an encounter he had after one of his meetings. He was approached by a man who told him the following story. The man had been eager to sign up and join the United States Army uh, in its uh, conflict at that time with Mexico. Now, the man's mother was not keen for him to do this at all. Uh, she didn't want him uh, joining the army. Uh, and she said that the only way that she would give her approval is he if he would first give his life uh, to the Lord. She had been trying, of course, uh, bringing him up, uh, trying to bring him up in the way of the faith, uh, in the way of Christ, and uh, was very keen for him uh, to uh, give his life to the Lord before he went off into conflict. But the man wasn't having any of it and in the end his, his mother uh, had to accept that to an extent uh, but did say this to him. She said, well, in that case, take this Bible at least. She had highlighted certain passages, she had put some notes in the fly leaf and so on. Take the Bible uh, and read it. And the second thing she says is take this watch. This was your father's watch. Uh, he gave it to me before he, he died and I'm giving it to you now. And she said to him, every day at 12 o'clock, you'll know that I'm here at that time praying for you every day. And the man took the watch and he took the Bible just to keep her happy. And he had no intention of reading the Bible, he says. But he tells Moody that some months down the line, uh, in the midst of conflict, and I think on a, on a march one particular day, uh, he took out his pocket watch. At the time... It was 12 o'clock, it was 12 noon. And at that moment he remembered his mother's words. And the story goes that he asked his commanding officer uh, for just a moment of uh, relief on the march, just a moment, and he nipped behind a clump of trees, prayed privately, praying to the God of his mother, asking for God to save him. And the man tells me that uh, he, from that moment on, he enlisted in God's army, if you will, and decided that he was going to dedicate his life uh, in the service 
of God. Now it's an interesting story that in many ways, and it can be used to illustrate many things. Uh, but the part that I find particularly interesting is the mother's persistence. She had been praying for him from the moment he was born probably, um, but she was going to commit herself to persistently praying at 12 noon every single day, however long it took, uh, uh, praying for him, praying that you would come to faith, uh, praying that you know Jesus. And it's that persistence in prayer uh, that we're thinking about today. Now, Moira read from, from Luke 18, uh, this is the passage where we hear of the persistent widow. Uh, the scenario is that there's a, a woman who has a, a, a legal, she's seeking legal remedy. She's seeking uh, legal uh, relief. Uh, but she goes to the judge with a problem and, and time and time again she's rejected. It's a hard judge, a hard man. He's not minded to please people. He's not minded to please God. He's uh, a, a tough guy, a tough man, a tough judge. And uh, yet she goes back again and again, not being deterred, not being disappointed by his rebuttals, but goes again and again, persistently asking the same thing. Uh, and eventually the judge uh, agrees to hear her case and grant her relief. Now, there's another, uh, in Luke chapter 11, uh, Luke also records another short parable where Jesus uh, paints the scenario of a, a, of a, a householder who receives a guest uh, late one night, an unexpected guest. Now, uh, the way that we're living our lives at the moment, uh, any guest would be an unexpected guest. We're not allowed to, of course, have guests uh, in our homes. But cast your mind back to when that was a thing and uh, try to imagine someone turning up at a late hour or someone turning up you hadn't expected uh, to arrive in your doorstep and um, a friend or a family member and, and you've... And imagine the scenario where you've got nothing in to feed them with. Uh, and... Uh, this, this is the scenario that Jesus presents. And so the man uh, decides that he'll go and ask his neighbour. And it's a, a late hour. And he goes knocking uh, on uh, the uh, neighbour's uh, door. Knocking on the neighbour's door late at night. Can you imagine? Uh, and the uh, householder is bleedy-eyed. You can imagine coming to the window, coming to the door. What do you want? What's this all about? Uh, and then he, he is... Uh, his neighbour asking uh, for bread, for food, to, to feed his uh, weedy guest. Uh, and we know at first that the, the neighbour is not minded to, to grant uh, this request for food at this late hour. You know, his response is, you know, I'm in bed, the whole house is in bed, sort of thing. Uh, away you go. But Jesus t tells us that the, 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 the audacity, the, the, the whole act of, of, of asking... Uh, probably the, the householder knowing that his uh, neighbour uh, is um, a good a good person perhaps uh, just the, the whole trust and hope and such like that brings them uh, to, to make the request in the first place is, is rewarded and so if you take the two parables together uh, persistence and, and just this, this, this going with, with trust and going into prayer um, with going in with re request with, with uh, enthusiasm uh, and, and with uh, expectation uh, of an answer to uh, when those things are combined uh, there's often results now remember let's not get confused let's not take things out of context let's remember it, this in, in the context of everything else we know about prayer what Jesus is not teaching is that if you ask for long enough You'll, get, you'll always get what you want, even if that's frivolous or it's not within the will of God. But of course, that's not what Jesus is teaching. Jesus is teaching that uh, if you're persistent in, in prayer uh, uh, and you're prepared to, to trust God and, and to go asking uh, for God, knowing that he will, knowing that he's merciful, knowing that he's loving, uh, knowing that he's much more uh, minded to hear us than a tough judge, or, or a bothered neighbour, uh, if you go again persistently asking, uh, then your prayer will be heard and there will be a response uh, to your prayer. Uh, it'll not go unanswered. And of course the answer, depending on what the prayer is, the answer might not be necessarily what you want it to be or what you expect it to be, um, but you will uh, have the ear of Almighty God. You will have uh, uh, the, the ear of uh, God the Father. Uh, through through prayer and if you're persistent in prayer and it is God's will uh, that your prayer uh, request 
um, come to pass uh, and be granted, uh, then uh, surely there will be a reward uh, to your uh, to your uh, persistence. And so, what a wonderful lesson that is, and isn't it uh, great to know that? And we're also told that in the scriptures that we're we're not uh, left uh, alone in this. Uh, this is a hard road to choose to to stick with with persistent prayer to to be faithful in prayer is not an easy option it's you know it's so easy to to choose the path of, of least resistance uh, to to just give up and, and, and give in and just assume that everything's out with our control and everything's out with god's control perhaps it's, that's the easy road to take the hard road is to be persistent in prayer and keep on trusting and keep the faith as heartening back to last week and what we were talking about then and so persistent prayer is the lesson uh, for today but you don't uh, walk that road alone it's tough it's hard but the holy spirit helps us uh, holy spirit helps us to find the words the holy spirit helps us uh, in discerning what god's will is uh, the holy spirit helps us in, in persisting and persevering in in prayer and so we're not uh, we're not completely uh, to walk this road uh, alone we have a, have a guide and a comforter and a friend who walks that road uh, with us and so that's a wonderful thing to be aware of in, in these times that we find ourselves and um, we are praying we are praying hard and, and, and we are being patient we are relying uh, on God for all these things um, but it's tough, it is tough as the months go on and I'm not just referring of course to the pandemic but everything else that's happening uh, in society at the moment and all these changes that's taking place and uh, how that affects our individual lives. And so we go to God with prayers for ourselves, for our families, and prayers for our church, prayers for uh, for our nation and for the world. Uh, and in all of these things, sometimes when you're faced with an overwhelming situation, it can be so tempting to just give up and give in and just imagine that uh, be tempted to think that, that you know that God uh, ha that God's not listening uh, and that God. Um, does not care and such like so those temptations are there we must resist them we must resist them and we must keep on uh, persevering uh, and be persistent uh, in prayer um, and what's wrong with dedicating a, a time just like the mother did what's wrong with setting aside a time in the day uh, if you need that to help you be disciplined and and and, and pray and pray and pray uh, hard for 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 this church uh, for for our land and, and for those that you love so be persistent, uh, keep on in praying and of course ca carry on too. Remember the mother gave a Bible as well as she gave a watch. So be persistent but also uh, keep on uh, in the word of God, reading the word of God and that helps us to uh, discern God's will uh, for our lives and to, uh, help, helps us to understand uh, the mind of God. And, and uh, how, what God values and, and what God thinks in every uh, given situation. That will help us in, our, in our, our prayer life too. Amen. Now I hope that reflection was uh, helpful uh, to you and an encouragement uh, to you. Uh, and now I'm going to ask uh, for Moina McCarroll uh, to uh, close our time with a word of prayer. Well, thanks for that, Scott. Uh, so let's now come to God in prayer. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us this morning. Thank you for what Scott has, has spoken to us about. Thank you for the encouragement of your word. And Lord, as we come to you at the beginning of this new year, we, we look back with gratitude, with gratitude for the way in which you have upheld us and sustained us, uh, confessing, Lord, that for many of us, much of the past year has been really difficult. Um, Lord, you know the things that we've struggled with in terms of lockdown and loss, uh, the, the, the missing of family, all sorts of things, Father, that we found so hard. But through it all, you have been constant. You have been faithful. And we thank you that that is fact it's something we can hold on to and have been able to hold on to over this past year. And so as we look to the future now, Father, we pray that we would have the, the faith that we need to continue with you. Lord, 
Keep us faithful, we pray, in, in every aspect of our lives, but particularly in, in prayer, Lord. Sometimes it's hard to pray, particularly when things are tough. Sometimes we don't know what to say, but thank you that, that you don't need us to say anything. We just need to come to you and sit in your presence and you know what's going on in our minds and our hearts. Thank you that you care, that you walk with us, that your arms are around us. And so as we go into this new year, Father, we pray that you would go before us and be in every part of 2021. And as we ask that for ourselves, Father, we pray that too for all our friends and family. Lord, this morning we want to pray for those whom we love, near or far. Whatever they are, whatever they're doing right now, Lord, we pray that they would know the presence of the God of peace, the God of all comfort, the God who is constant, Emmanuel, God with us. And we pray too, Father, for our church family, for the Kinmiley's family, who have come to mean so much to us over the years. Lord, wherever they are, whether they're out and about today or whether they're at home, Lord, we just pray that you would be with them. Thank you for keeping us together over this past year. And as the restrictions continue, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be faithful in praying for one another. Thank you that we can do that even when we feel there's so little we can do. We can pray for one another. So help us to do that, Lord. So for those who are struggling today, for those who are unwell, struggling with ill health or worry, fear for the future, whatever it is, Lord, we pray that you would be near to them. Comfort them, we pray. Be with one another. Thank you, Lord, that we don't need to know the future. You know all of that. We just need to know the God who holds the future. And so we trust in you today, Father, and we trust you for the future. Help us, we pray, as we've been encouraged this morning, to remain faithful to you, just as you will be faithful to us. Thank you, Father. Go with us now into the future, we pray, and with all whom we love. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>